Gopher Coaches Show is presented by Window Concepts and Affinity Plus Federal Credit Union. Now, it's the Gopher Coaches Show with Lindsey Whalen and Ben Johnson. Welcome in to another installment of the Gopher Coaches Show. I'm your host, Ahmad Hicks. Helping row the boat is K-Fans Justin Gard, and we also have men's head basketball coach Ben Johnson joining us this week. Coach, thanks for joining the set. We're glad you're here. Pleasure to be here. All right, year two around the sun here is the Minnesota Gophers head basketball coach. What is the biggest difference from year one to year two? Probably just that you have a better feel and understanding of what you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, that could be just on your day-to-day -day operations. Mm -hmm. It could be on your practice schedule. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously your offense, defensive schemes, but just you're more concrete and definitive in, in how you want to play and, and how you want to run your, your organization. Mm -hmm. Another difference last year, very veteran crew. Grad transfers from all over the place. Now you've got kids running around all over the place, including four freshmen. Um, so how have they come along here you know, a couple of months into the season? They've developed really well. I thought the, the progression of our team um, is trending the way that I hoped and thought it would, where you know, the beginning it was going to be you know, a little bit rough as we're just trying to figure out you know, how we're going to play and the pieces and obviously not having Jameis in the first couple games. And now as you get into the, kind of about the halfway point, guys are figuring out, all right, here's kind of my role definition. Um, here's how I play with others. The young guys are figuring out this level and figuring out what you can and can't do. Their development has gotten much better, especially the last couple games. So it's progressed. We're trending in the right way. Um, we just got to keep building and, and work on getting better each and every day. Now, can you talk about some of those freshmen that you have? Payne, Ola, Joseph, Carrington, Henley, what they're doing for this program and the type of culture that they're establishing right now? I think first and foremost, they're, they're willing workers. Um, you know, each and every day, those guys are in the gym. And I think it starts with that. I think uh, you have to prioritize skill development and the players have to own that. Uh, they want to get better. Um, they want to compete. And so because of that, it's a lot easier to see them grow the way they have. And, and we're relying on them. So, you know, I told them, you don't really, you don't really have a choice. Um, but to, to see them embrace that um, and to see them want to continue to grow uh, both mentally and physically uh, has, been, has been, you know, awesome to be around. And I think you're noticing the in-game experience you can't teach that, and they're getting that on-the-job training, which is going to be so important not only for this year, but as we continue to build our program. Now, you talk about they're getting that experience, that in-game experience right now, so far winless in conference. What has been the learning point, if there has been one, for your team, and what is your message to them when they step on the court and practice each and every day? I think the biggest thing is how hard it is to win, um, especially as you get into league play where everyone knows – personnel, everyone knows what you run. Mm -hmm. um, you know, most teams don't change their identity as much. So your room for error and the margin for error is so small that the details matter. And whether it's the new guys um, or the younger guys, um, getting them to understand that in this league, you can't take anything for granted. Um, and the, the, those details on both sides of the ball are so important. And I think you have to kind of go through it to fully grasp that. Um, and I think we are to that point now where you know, everybody on our roster has played enough and they've right. been in enough Big Ten games where they, they get it now. And we've kind of been burned by it. And sometimes you do. You got to early. You got to get burned to grow. And, um, you know, hopefully from here on out, we're trending in the other way. Well, the last week is a good example of that, right? A tough road loss against Wisconsin, tough home loss here on this floor where it's down to the final minute. It goes down to a couple of different possessions here and there. So what's the difference to flip? those last couple of minutes or that winning time, as you always say, in the Gophers' favor? Yeah, the good part is, um, you know, you, don't, you never want to have the feeling of losing, but you have that feeling because you gave yourself a chance. And so then you go back and you watch the film and you say, okay, what got us in that position? We need to, you know, really build on that and then realize, okay, this play and this play we can't do if we want to be able to flip the narrative. And so it could be, you know, a rebounding mistake here, a defensive assignment that's a mistake here. It could be just tighter or smoother with our offense. Um, each game there's a learning curve that we have to figure out, and each game has been a little bit different. Um, but I also think we've shown growth in other areas too. So now we just got to be able to, to mesh and have everything kind of combine and, and come together as one. Uh, and I look forward to doing that this week. 
Now, you talked about Jamison Battle uh, earlier and how he had an injury at the beginning of the season. You were missing your guy. What did that do for your program? Did you think that that forced younger players to step in and fill that void right away? Or did you think that your team needed that leadership early on and they kind of missed his presence? Oh, definitely. I think it started even in the summer mm -hmm. when you lose um, two other players in, in Parker and Isaiah. Mm -hmm. um, that right then knew that the freshmen were going to play a bigger role um, than they probably even expected because you're already down two guys that you know are older and mm -hmm. probably two starters, you know. Mm -hmm. And then when you lose Jamison, you're really down three guys before you even start the season. <laughs> right. um, so everybody's role, I knew right then and there, is like, okay, we got to get these guys ready mm -hmm. because at least for the next two weeks, like, they're going to be really thrown to the fire. Right. Um, and so to get them that experience, um, it's valuable because, again, I, I think the, the greatest teacher is experience. Um, and there's growing pains with that. So what you want to try to do is you want them to feel success so they continue to, to grow positively mentally. Um, you don't want them to, to experience failure all the time, but at the same time, they need to understand that sometimes that's part of the growth process right. is, again, you've got to go through it, positive or negative. And so I think they're going to take and they have taken full advantage of the opportunity that all four of them have had. And again, it will only help them down the line and help our program down the line. You, ahead, you mentioned the, uh, the before the season, some players losing them even before this offseason you got good news that Dawson Garcia was coming home he got cleared to play transfer waiver the whole bit experienced guy huge pedigree coming out of high school fans were very excited about him. now that he's here and playing kind of take us through what you've seen from him and how important he is for you yeah I think he's done a great job of um, setting the tone especially in Jamison's absence early with just the competitive spirits you have to have um, never takes a playoff almost got to kick him out of uh, reps in practice um, but a guy that, that continues is trying to grow and build and learn, but setting that cultural tone of what it takes at this level to be competitive, to put yourself in a, in a position to win. And then obviously that translates to on-court production. Mm -hmm. And that's a great example for our young guys is it's not a light switch. You can't turn it off and on. Your right. practice habits will bleed over to success on the court. And it's no shock that like he's able to produce because he has unbelievable practice habits for, for everybody in our program to see the day-to-day -day and the work that you put in, um, it leads to me being able to tell them, well, it's no secret why. You've seen it every day. <laughs> and so hopefully that will rub off on everybody else. We're going to have him on the show next segment. I'll probably ask him this question too, but how have you seen him handle the expectation? Because it was big news when he decided to come back here, as right. I mentioned. Highly touted coming out of high school, played at North Carolina the whole bit. That's a different kind of pressure. Um, how do you think he's kind of handled that? I think he's handled it great. Um, you know, we talk a lot about the only pressure that these guys have and I want them to have is the pressure to play hard every single game or every single practice. Um, there's always going to be outside noise, especially when you're a player that has a high talent level and you've produced. You can't worry about that. You just have to worry about, all right, am I doing the things I need to do on a day-to-day -day basis to give myself an opportunity to be successful and give our team an opportunity to be successful? And again, the only pressure that those guys need to feel is the pressure of, am I giving everything I have all the time, all gas, no breaks? You know, I'm going to ask Garcia this when he joins our set coming up next, but he's one of four players to earn a seat, the captain jersey, the captain honor on the team. What did it mean for you to give a guy that who hadn't been in your program for more than a year? I think it just talks to just his work you know, ethic and, and the fact that, you know, you're able to do that as a coach because of what he did in the summer and in the early fall. Um, you know, if a guy comes in here with the wrong mentality and doesn't earn it, well, you know, the, the, the meaningful C doesn't right. matter. The right. guys will see through that. Mm -hmm. But as a credit to him because of how he conducted himself and how he worked, that it was honestly an easy decision. Um, and so I think that is when it comes to leadership, uh, you know, you can't fool yourself and you can't fool your teammates. And I think that's so important. And it was good for our young guys to see that they respect guys that are everyday type workers and then that fully embrace kind of what we're about as a program that could be in study hall, in the classroom on campus, in the weight room on the court. And he's definitely one of those guys. Now I want to ask you about your fans. Um, the attendance may not be the best um, compared to years past and the fans that show up, but had quite a bit of a turnout for the Nebraska game here kind of let down at the end, but what do you want to say to your fan about where this program is headed in the, the rest of the season in the next couple of years? I thought it was a great turnout. Right. Um, you know, we, we talk a lot internally and, and try to get out as much as possible how much the fan support, you know, we appreciate, um, how much it does help, when, and, and especially with winning. Um, and, and our guys feel that. Our guys, 
I think, played off of the crowd's emotion on Saturday. Um, and so, you know, we've got to do our part and, and play entertaining, clean basketball. Um, but I also see, I think across the country, you see that. I think post-COVID, it's still, whether it's pro or whether it's college, there is kind of that adjustment period. And, um, you know, fans know that now sometimes they do have options. Um, but again, I think this place and our fan base um, is something that's really special. And we're going to continue to build and grow. Um, but I really want them to know that they're a huge part of what we do. And we're not going to be able to make this as successful as it can be mm -hmm. without, you know, their support and their teamwork. And um, so definitely is much appreciated. And, and we look forward to having them back out here in, in numbers like we did on Saturday. Well, Gopher fans, you heard from Coach Johnson. He wants you here each and every home game. And we want you to stay with us because coming up after the break, we have Dawson Garcia joining the set to talk about his first year as a Gopher and the expectations he has for the remainder of the season. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more Gopher Coaches Show. Watching the Gopher Coaches Show. Welcome back to the Gophers Coaches Show. I'm Ahmad Hicks. That's Justin Gard, Ben Johnson, and the first-year Gopher, Dawson Garcia. First, I wanna, first thing I want to ask you, I don't want to talk about basketball. I want to figure out how you're getting adjusted to the winter weather here in Minnesota. How's it treating you? Uh, it's not an adjustment at all. I mean, I grew up here. I was in the Midwest for 20 years of my life. So, right. <laughs> yeah. so you didn't get acclimated to the warm weather in other places, and you're fitting just, just fine right here, fitting in. Yeah, I would say, right. say the cold is the cold in general, too. Like, you don't, you don't ever really get used to it. <laughs> well, I can agree with that. Now let's talk about the adjustment here. Playing for Minnesota, coming back to your home state, what does it mean to put on the burgundy and gold and support the team that you grew up watching? Uh, it means everything. Just, you know, looking at, looking at that Minnesota across your chest before a game and you're going against, you're playing other teams, and you kind of have a certain level of pride because you grew up there and... Um, especially uh, when we're playing on the home court. That's uh, why it's, uh, we have such an urgency to protect it and move forward doing that as well. You played in the Big East, played in the ACC, now in the Big Ten. What's Big Ten life like? What are the kind of the differences from other leagues that you played in? Yeah, I'd say the parody's crazy. It's just night in, night out. Like, it's not a team in the league that um, has an easy pass each night. You know, anybody can beat anybody. And, you know, uh, coach, and I remember J-Mo telling me that before the year as well, but you, didn't, you don't really realize it until you're in it for real. So you come here, you're averaging 14 points a game, six rebounds, have 23 assists on the season, and you're wearing the captain as we talked about in the first block. Did that mean a lot to you? Did you expect to come in and have the type of impact that you're having right now? Uh, you know, I didn't really have any type of expectations besides just come in and, you know, put my best foot forward. And, yeah, getting the cap, uh, captain honor meant a lot. And, you know, I'm honored to do it alongside, uh, you know, Talon, Jamison, and Torres as well because I feel like they do a great job every day is setting the tone and helping me lead as well. So, Ben, as a guy who obviously knows Minnesota basketball well, uh, knows recruiting Minnesota well, no matter where you were, right, mm -hmm. what do you first remember about when you saw Daw Dawson Garcia? Was it like middle school? Was it at a camp? What do you remember when he got on your radar? <clears throat> you know, I think it was, uh, it was at our team camp, and he was playing across the street at the rec like the sixth level. Um, <laughs> I just remember, I don't know if you remember this, but I just remember, I think at that time he was a ninth grader, I think. And so I go over there and I'm watching him and he's got the size, obviously, you know, a lefty. So he's got kind of that crafty game. Um, and so you, you see the talent and you see the skill level at such a young age, you get excited, but then you quickly realize like it's so far <laughs> from making a decision that it's just kind of like, yeah, whatever. Um, but you always knew from that, from that moment on that he was going to be a really talented player. And then the more you got to know him, you talk about his work ethic, that he loves it, he has a passion for it, uh, he doesn't mind the hard work, he's a nuts and bolts guy that, you know, skies could truly be the limit for him. So you recruited him a little bit at Xavier then, I would imagine, too, right? A little bit, yeah. He actually uh, came down like the first week I was on the job and got him on campus. Uh, Couldn't quite so hook him, though. Was, uh, apparently 0 for 2 <laughs> like, <laughs> until I got the job here. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, he's, he's, he's where he belongs, and that's the most important thing. Dawson, how hard did Coach have to recruit you to get you to come back here, or what, did you have it in the back of your mind, I need to go back home and play for the home state? Um, well, it wasn't really like, for a, for a long time, I wasn't thinking about basketball at all. Mm -hmm. And so when it came down to it, you know, I really just want to be surrounded by my family and friends, and, you know, I, I was very excited to um, put on the Minnesota jersey when that, I, I finally made that decision. 
And, you know, that's just what it really came down to. Hey, Coach, when you heard his name being in the transfer portal and you having a third opportunity to grab him, what was going through your mind about Dawson? Yeah, no, the first thing is kind of what he alluded to. Um, you know, you do your homework and you figure out, you know, why guys are making a move. And so, you know, just knowing him previously, knowing his family, the first thing, you know, that crossed my mind was making sure that he was good as a, as a person. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that comes before all else. You know, everybody goes through something and deals with certain things. So I just want to make sure um, that him and his family were good. And then once you're able to kind of have those talks, then it, and it progressively moves to, okay, well, now what are you thinking for your next step? Because you, you want it to work for both sides. And I know in order for, you know, him to reach his max potential, it, it's got to be a two-way street. Right. And so then you progress into the, okay, well, here's what we have here. Here's an opportunity. Are you kind of looking for the same thing? And you get to have those kind of more basketball talks. But I think at the end of the day, it all starts with, you know, him and his family as people uh, making sure that, you know, they were good and then giving them time to kind of as a family talk about the next move. Got it. Dawson, Coach has talked a lot about uh, your leading by example and the tone that it sets for the younger players. Has that always been something that's kind of in your DNA? Have you always been maybe one of the hardest workers on the floor on the team? And is that something you take pride in? Yeah, I would say just, you know, you can always – when you lead by example, there's really no, like, bluff or, um, I guess, like, false, falseness about it. You know what I'm saying? If you just go up, uh, show up to work every day and work hard, um, I feel like that kind of, when I had leaders before me, um, I kind of looked at that more than what they would say. Do you remember the team camp he's talking about? Yeah, I do. How'd you play I, over there on the sixth floor? I don't even remember, honestly, <laughs> but I just remember, like, I was playing on, it was like the rubber course, I think. And, yeah, I haven't been back there since. Yeah. Throwback. He did the throwback jersey Saturday. Maybe do a throwback over there, back to the roots. So, what st stood out about uh, you know Ben and Coach Johnson, you know, throughout the entirety of your relationship? Obviously, if you were you know taking his phone calls here at the U, taking him in at Xavier, uh, there was a pretty good connection there. Yeah, for sure. I would say um, it's always been you know a great relationship, um, just as much as like the staff here as well. I feel like we've really um, connected well, and you know they they truly want the best for us and our development as well. Um, spent a lot of time with us in the gym, um, just getting us better each and every day. And, you know, I think that's a big thing. I want to ask you about Jamison Battle, obviously the leader before you got here. Now you guys are co-leaders. What has he taught you about leading this squad? And what has he helped your game? How, how has he helped your game develop in the little time that you've been here? Yeah, he's helped me a lot. You know, me and Jamison go way back. Um, so I feel like he's helped my game for a long time, just um, especially that, uh, that COVID summer um, 2020. We spent like every day together in the gym. Um, over at Drive uh, in Edina. So, you know, we, we go way back, and, uh, you know, it's just great that I can finally, you know, play five-on-five -five college basketball with him. It's, it's really surreal, to be honest. Well, it's surreal for every Gopher fan watching you guys every game. That's Dawson Garcia. We want to thank you for joining the set. Best of luck in the rest of the season. We'll be watching. And be sure to stay with us because we're talking more Big Ten Conference coming up, and we're going to get Coach Johnson's thoughts on mental health and why that's important in college sports. Stick around. More Gophers Coaches Show coming your way. To the Gopher Coaches Show. You know, I think... When you're in that position, I think you feel very alone. You're the only one, you know, uh, going through it. But then when you find out that there's so many people in every walk of life, you know, Kevin Love has been very open about it. You know, Lane Johnson from the Eagles. I mean, there's so many high-profile professional athletes that have, have gone through this. I'm sure a lot of them have gone through it, never said anything. Welcome back to the Gopher Coaches Show. I'm Ahmad Hicks, Justin Gard, Coach Johnson. That was Fran McCaffrey talking about his son, Patrick McCaffrey, having to take a break from the basketball responsibilities to take care of his mental health. And Justin, I know you had a question you wanted to ask Coach Johnson, so go ahead. Yeah, we've seen it on the, on the women's side as well. A Wisconsin player just left the team for kind of the same reason. So how much do you spend as a staff or as a head coach in checking in with different guys and making sure that everybody's good? Because certainly the last few years, coming out of a pandemic, social media, all of that, it seems like that has really come to the forefront. So how much of a, an emphasis is it for you and your program? It's a lot. You know, we really try to make sure that our guys, not only on the floor, are mentally okay, but all the pressure's outside, you know. Um, these aren't pro athletes and they have a lot going on in their life. And now you add uh, social media, the good and the bad with that. Um, 
all of that stuff for young people sometimes can be hard to digest. And so, you know, I'll probably on a daily, you're just, you're reading guys' behavior, you're asking questions. Um, we do stuff in the summer um, as a team just to make sure that they understand if you're going through things or when you do, because we all do at some point, that they have the proper outlet to get whatever they need off their chest or have a conversation, whether it's my staff, the extended staff within our athletic department or somebody on the outside. I think it's really important. Um, you know, coaches, we got to be accountable for our players, not just on the floor, but in overall life. And this isn't something you even had to deal with as a player, you know, 20 years ago. You're still a young coach, and I know you played here at the U. You know a lot about what they're going through, but this is, this is not something that, that you dealt with or people our age dealt with when we were 18, 19, 20 years old. Right. I think probably the big change is, is we dealt with it different ways, yeah. right, where it was always present, mm -hmm. um, but maybe at times it wasn't something that was socially acceptable to talk about, right. or it was kind of brushed under the rug, or you were told just to, quote, you know, suck it up, right. or you just, your, your brain, you didn't allow you to go there, and you just kind of maybe suffered in silence for some people, whereas now, um, you know, it's, 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 definitely a topic that that is more open and and i think thankfully people have stepped up to the table and and said you know this is a real issue and we got to be conscious of it and we need to help young people old people get over the stigma of it being a bad thing and um you know i think now we're taking steps in everything we do as a program but as a society to really honor mental health and, and making sure people are good well, kudos to you guys doing that, and thank you for joining the show with us. We appreciate your time on Mental Health and talking about the basketball program. Big game coming up for the Gophers this Thursday when they take on a ranked Ohio State team. We're hoping they come out victorious before Illinois comes to town next Monday. Until then, we'll see you guys next week for another edition of the Gopher Coaches Show.